Divination is the technique used by people all over the world to communicate with God. Among some people, prayer directly to God is permitted, and God answers people's prayers. In other religions, an intermediary is required who helps us speak with God. This intermediary may be called a priest, pastor, imam, rabbi, babalao, baga, or any of thousands of other names. In many religions, complex techniques are used to discover God's will. Tarot, Ouija boards, Kuba rubbing oracles, Pende Galukashi oracles, Yoruba Ifa divination, Dogon Fox divination, Bobo San divination, and many, many other techniques are used by diviners around the world. All of these techniques permit the diviner to understand the wishes of the spiritual beings who govern people's lives and provide the answers to the questions no one else can help with. Over the millennia of human existence, all of these techniques have been proven to be equally effective. This film is about the performance of an elderly diviner named Sawadogo Tinguyamba, who is the Baga, or diviner, of the village of Dablo in northern Burkina Faso. Mr. Sawadogo wears a complex costume made of leather, cotton cloth, and cowrie shells. Around his neck and arms, he wears magical amulets that give him spiritual power. He wears a hood covered with cowrie shells and adorned with two cast brass horns over his head. Throughout the performance, he uses four iron gongs, which he strikes with an iron ring on each thumb. The sound of the gongs is the voice of the spirits. The film was made by my colleague Jacob Bamago and his nephew Abdullah Bamago in the spring of 2005 in Dablo. The Bamago family are Smiths in Dablo and have lived and worked there for centuries. Jacob and Abdullah have watched and consulted the Baga many times themselves, especially about questions about the correct path to follow in their lives. The film was made based on what the participants felt was important. Sawadogo Tinguyamba himself, as well as Jacob and Abdullah, made this video as an effort to preserve an old tradition in Dablo and to preserve it in images that younger generations can watch in coming years. In March 2006, I visited Dablo and spoke with Mr. Sawadogo. He told me about his family, his work, the costume he wears, and the spirit beings with which he communicates. I was aided by my friend Adama Bamago. <laughs>
In the opening scenes, the Baga is preparing himself for a performance before the Mosi chief of Dablo. With the help of his younger brother and son, and of the Dablo Tengsaba, or earth priest, Mr. Sawadilgo puts on leather trousers and shoes, a beautiful cotton shirt decorated with mud-dyed patterns, and hundreds of cowrie shells, and an apron made of red, brown, black, and white leather. His son hands in the iron gongs, and finally all of his friends and male relatives help him with the cowrie covered hood. <laughs> 
As soon as Mr. Sawadogo is dressed, the village earth priest called a Tengso by Moray performs a chicken sacrifice to ask for God's guidance and to ask the spirits to speak through the Baga. The diviner places his foot on two of the sacred power objects or shrines called Twabse in the plural or Twabaga in the singular, so that as the blood of the sacrifice covers the Twabse, some of it splashes on his foot. For the sacrifice to be successful, the chicken must die on its back. So an assistant reaches in at the last moment to make sure the chicken dies on its back.
The painting you see here was made by the German artist Karl Ariens, who accompanied the anthropologist, folklorist, and explorer Leo Frobenius to Africa in 1907. On his way to German Togoland, and later to Nigeria, Frobenius passed through Burkina Faso, which was then a French colony. He photographed chiefs, people, architecture, and masks, and Arians drew and painted what they saw. This painting lay neglected, browned, and faded in the archives of the Frobenius Institute in Frankfurt am Main, where I photographed it in 1976. Last year I photoshopped it, restoring all of its original color and beauty. Arians painted this baga a century ago somewhere in northern Mosi country. The baga has been an important tradition in many villages in the region for a very long time, so there is no evidence he actually painted the baga in Dablo. But as you can see, the details of the costume are very close to those in the film. <laughs> Once sacrifices have been offered, the Baga speaks with the voice of the spirits. Followed by his male relatives and the Tengsoba, Mr. Sawadogo walks to the public square where the chief of Dablo is waiting. A group of Mosi drummers called Bendre, or Benda in the singular, follow and provide sacred music, calling on God to speak through the diviner and provide guidance to the chief. He is accompanied by the earth priest who wears an old-fashioned and very traditional Mosi hat and shirt and carries his sacred forked staff, called a rayaka. The staff is a sacred weapon with which he can reach up and catch the rain clouds to drag them over his village and water the soil. He can also use it to draw down lightning to destroy the physical and spiritual enemies of the community. The Tengsoba staff is exceptionally beautiful because it is cast of brass. As soon as the Baga has arrived at the chief's royal sun shelter, the two sacred twabse, or power objects, are placed on the ground. The drummers take their seats to one side, and Mr. Sawadogo begins to perform, followed closely and assisted by his younger brother. The slow, elegant dance of the elderly diviner is a marked contrast to the frenetic, rapid, athletic performances, which are the stereotype of performance in Africa. My personal experience over 30 years in Africa is that this stately and elegant performance is more usual than the rapid dances invented to please a non-African consumer market.
In this performance, the major audience is the Mosi chief of the village, seated in a colorful orange robe and wearing the very distinctive chief's hat that is unique to the Mosi. During more public performances, the Baga pauses as he makes the circuit of the dance area and speaks individually to members of the audience, inquiring about why they have come and telling them that their work will be a success or perhaps end in failure. As the divination ends, the Baga takes his seat on the sacred mortar that is his alone to use. As the sun sets, the performance ends, and the diviner returns to his home where he removes the costume. This final scene, shot by Abdullah Bamago, shows the chief in the background and the lightning staff, or Rayaka, in the foreground. These are the two ubiquitous symbols of power in Mosi country. The chief represents secular military power in the person of the royals, descended directly from the cavalry who conquered the region in 1500 AD. And the fork represents the spiritual power in the body of the earth priest, the direct descendant of the farmers who first settled on the land and who have used it for millennia. Thank you.